Howdy, homesteaders. Today, we're going to look at our seed starters. If you've been following our videos, you'll know that our uh, we had a video on uh, five things that you're excited about this spring. And that is a collaboration. It's an open collaboration that everyone who wants to join it uh, is welcome to join that collaboration. Uh, but I am putting a time limit of uh, March 15th. Uh, you make that video, you put it on your page, then you refer them back to our channel, right? And that way they can see the playlist that you're referring them to. And we also have a playlist on the bottom of our video where you can actually copy and paste that and then put that on underneath your video so that they know where the playlist is. And then whenever you do that, not only are you referring them to other videos, but people who made other videos are also referring them to your videos. So everyone that's in the playlist is being watched. So everyone's benefiting. Uh, everybody's going to have different five things. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think everyone is going to have the same five things that they're excited about. Uh, you know, we all have different lives. We've got different things going on. We're all in different stages of development. And also gives uh, people who are watching a chance to, to see different glimpses into different people's lives, uh, uh, particularly homesteading lives. And you get to see what's going on. And you can say, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. And uh, so I think it's a really good collaboration. So uh, if you want to join that, go watch that video. Uh, five things that we're excited about this spring. I put all the details of the collaboration at the beginning of the video. You can watch it. Uh, it it's, it's explained. So uh, I'm just wanting to see how big, you know, how big is this uh, collaboration going to get? I wonder how big it's going to get. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll find out by March 15th how many we ended up getting. You know, during that video that we were making, we were planting seeds, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, what were some of the seeds we were planting, honey? Um, tomatoes and peppers, I think. Just tomatoes, huh? Okay. We planted uh, peppers, too. I mean, what kind of tomatoes were we planting? Mortgage lifters. Mortgage lifters, okay, that's one. And uh, gold metal. The gold metal ones, okay. Those are the orange tomatoes, and, and they're heritage tomatoes. Mm -hmm. They're not hybrids, they're heritage. And we firmly uh, believe in uh, uh, as many uh, heirloom or heritage uh, uh, vegetables and, and things you can grow because you can save the seeds. You know, you can actually save the seeds and... That's something that's sustainable. And, uh, you know, if something were to happen to where you couldn't get access to the seeds for whatever reason, uh, then guess what? You're not growing anything that year. So that's not very uh, sustainable. So we like the uh, heirloom and cultivar, you know, the heirloom and uh, heritage uh, varieties. Uh, that's what we, uh, we go for as much as possible. And, you know, there are some things that we probably wouldn't be good at harvesting seeds on it just depends on what it is one that is a little harder is like um cabbage mm -hmm. you have cabbage to seeds. actually hold on to the head and um like store it uh where uh, where it's protected through the winter and then um take it and put plant it right back out into the garden and then it will um throw up um a seed head up through the middle of the head and it'll flower, and then, then you get your seeds from that. But it takes two seasons. It's a biennial. Right. It, it grows the first season, and then the second season, it blooms. It's a biennial. But anyway, what I was saying was is Sorry. that <laughs> some seeds are not as easy to keep than others. You know, some are easier to keep. Some are. So, uh, you know, until you kind of figure out how uh, to uh, properly harvest all your seeds and, and to get them the uh, – the best germination out of them and, and proper storage and all these things until you get these things down, then yeah, you might find yourself buying these seeds year after year until you figure out how it goes. And, you know, so it's, it's just a, a growing thing. You can't do everything uh, your first time out. And if you're waiting until you research and you research and you research and you research and you research, I got to figure out how to do every single thing. I got to be an expert on everything, everything that I'm going to do before you ever get started, chances are you're never going to get started. That's that's usually what happens. You you end up uh, spending so much time, overload yourself so much information, and then you're like, oh, there's no way I can do all of this, right? And there probably isn't. <laughs> 
So what you do is you bite off little chunks. You say, okay, well, I'm going to do this and see how it turns out. Oh, this is doing good. So I'm going to keep doing this until I get used to it. Okay, now I'm used to it. Okay, I'm going to try something else and add on to it. Oh, wow, that was kind of exciting. And add on to that and add on to that. Next thing you know, you find yourself doing a lot of things years down the road that you didn't think you'd be able to do. So, so I think that's the secret is just do a little bit at a time. So anyway, we had these seeds that we planted uh, on that video. And now we are going to go see the results, or at least some of the results. Uh, we have some results that are in. <laughs> we see that there's really not a lot going on with these peppers. Okay. And let's look at these other peppers. Yeah. The Anchio peppers. They turn into uh, plo Plobano. <laughs> I would say... Uh, you know, no poblano. <laughs> so, yeah, there's no poblano here. And it's something that my wife uh, did a little research on. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about honey? Didn't you go to uh, Deep South Homestead and you're watching a video and you asked them about it and then they told you? Well, I went to Deep South Homesteads and I was watching their uh, their chat on the port porch chats I think mm -hmm. they call it and um, they started talking about starting seeds and they said that um, one year there are pepper plant uh, seeds weren't uh, coming up and they said they re it was like two weeks and and it was way overdue and so they decided to uh, put them on some heat uh, pads and then they all started sprouting. And they just needed that extra heat for them to sprout. And also, the pepper seeds always sprout later than tomato seeds. So, and it made me feel better about ours not sprouting. Right. I don't know if you remember me saying this, but in the uh, five things that we're most excited about this spring video, uh, when I was talking about the mortgage lifters, um, I say, you know, they are five years old, uh, roundabouts. Uh, we bought them back in 2014. Now it's 2019, and it's close to around the same time of year that we bought them. So they're really close to about five years old. And I think if you remember that, or if you don't remember that, go watch the video. Uh, I did say that, uh, you know, another reason why I was excited about these uh, mortgage lifter seeds is that it would require some faith. It requires some faith that they were going to grow. So we were planting them in faith and, and just hoping that they would grow. And then now we're going to see what they look like now. Would you look at that? <laughs> many of these have come up. I think every square sprouted and in every square at least one if not like three four of them sprouted. Yeah there's like two or three in each one of these yep. spots. So every spot sprouted. And if there is a spot that didn't sprout it doesn't matter because some of these other ones sprouted two and three. Yep. <laughs> So that is a complete success. So it just goes to show, just because your seeds are old, don't give up on them. Plant them and see what happens. We didn't even re, uh, re freeze them like they recommend. And it's just amazing what God can do. Now here are some other things that came up. Uh, the uh, gold metal tomatoes, there's a couple of them that sprouted up just today. Actually, about half of these sprouted up today. So that one right there will eventually straighten up. That will straighten up once it clears the ground. 
They were planted two days after the mortgage lifters. Right. Okay, so that's doing good. Okay, now here over here, we had a lot of cabbages that decided to come up. All of these are cabbages right here. So they are looking good. Really su surprised about the cabbages, right? We've got some broccoli in here. Some of these really tall ones right here are actually broccoli, right? So they're coming up. And we have a lot of cauliflower. All of these do in this row, these are all cauliflowers that are coming up. So that's really good. What we did differently is that we took them from this bottom row. This is where they were. And we took them out of there and we put them in this top row. In the top row, the lights are spaced further up. And the reason I put them further up is so I can fit this box underneath the trays. When I tried to put this box underneath the trays on the shelf below, it pushed them too far into the light and it wouldn't have wouldn't have worked at all. It would have been right on the bulbs. So I didn't want to do that. So I put them up here to have a little bit more room to put this box in there. And what what's happened is now the plants are closer to the light without actually touching it. And what that's going to do is that's going to it's going to prevent them from growing taller and hopefully it'll make them grow stronger and make their roots stronger before they go through their next growing spurt. Now I'm going to use these as an example. One thing I did learn from growing microgreens is that right now they're still in this first stage of development. It's the two, uh, the true leaf stage or the two leaf stage and you know whenever these leaves are on here uh, this plant is still getting all of its nutrition from the seed. Right? So whenever it puts on more leaves and goes to the next stage of a development, that's when it actually starts pulling the nutrients from the soil. So right now, this is like the equivalent of a microgreen tomato, if you want to think of it that way. So I hope this has been encouraging uh, to someone out there. I know it's really encouraging to us. That, you know, sometimes you plant and you don't really know what's going to happen. You're hoping that they're all going to come up or some of them are going to come up. And, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, uh, you know, my plants will grow for just about anybody. You know, I'm not saying that uh, you have to have faith for all this to work. It, it all works because of God's design. It's the way he's programmed it. But sometimes I believe that sometimes you might end up with seeds that normally wouldn't grow. That normally might even be impossible to grow. And then, you know, just having faith in the Lord and the Lord can provide that the Lord could actually do a little small miracle there to cause something to grow that otherwise wouldn't. Uh, so that's that's what I'm talking about when I said that it might require a little faith for those mortgage lifters to grow. And right now, out of all the seeds that we planted, they are the number one growers out of all of them. Out of all of them. You know what? You know, uh, it doesn't matter how old they are. Uh, if the Lord wants them to grow, they're going to grow. So that's why I said, you know, maybe it's just going to require a little bit of faith. And that was another reason why I was excited about it. Because, it, you know, something that, that can be done in faith, and you get to see something that the Lord has done, and you get to see the Lord at work, that gets exciting for me. So I'm really excited how everything's are, are turning out and how everything's going. But it puts a little pressure on us. Because now we have to provide a place for all of these seedlings to go when they're mature enough. So now we're on the time clock and we have to work hard at either putting up some raised beds or, you know, uh, till up some soil or whatever it is that we're going to do to plant these plants whenever they get to maturity. Uh, we're under some pressure, so uh, we're going to do some planning and figuring out and I believe we'll come up with a solution. So I hope this has been encouraging, and again, if you want to join that collaboration, go check out that video, and I'll put the link down below, so go check them out. If you want to join up, make a video, join up before it's, before it's over.
years, you have to give it a pause and we're going to cut this part out and all that stuff. <laughs> Start talking. <laughs>